It's really in the past decade that smartphones have become ubiquitous and devices that we carry with us for everything from communication to playing games and running the latest apps. However, there are only about five or six devices I can count as being truly memorable, and this is one of them. Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our retro look back and a throwback review of the HTC HD2. This is an iconic smartphone that came out in 2009 and originally ran on the Microsoft Windows Mobile 6.5 platform. It was the first Microsoft Windows mobile phone with a capacitive touchscreen display and at a time a whopping 4.3 inch LCD panel that was one of the largest. And back then many held it as being too large or unwieldy and of course today 5 inches even seems normal for a smartphone. Other specifications are also aging but at the time they were cutting edge. They included a 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon S1 processor coupled with less than half a gigabyte of RAM. However, it was more than enough for the operating system. The most impressive thing about the HTC HD2 is it simply refuses to die. Even today, there's lots of community support for this phone, and folks have ported all sorts of operating systems onto it, from a full version of Windows to the latest Android 7.0, even to Ubuntu Touch. Taking a closer look at its design, what's impressive is the phone still seems quite modern here in 2017. It really says a lot about HTC's design philosophy, and comparing it with other modern smartphones, you can see that at 11 millimeters thick, it's still quite easy to slip into a pocket or into a backpack for easy transportation. What's more, the bezels on this phone are still quite small, and that's especially true since HTC didn't have a front-facing camera on the HD2, minimizing the need for a larger border on the very top, and you only have a earpiece and a proximity light sensor. Below the 4.3-inch LCD display, there's access to an HTC logo, an array of hardware physical keys which were backlit for easier navigation under darker environments and they gave access to a uh, power on and off switch and also a back key, a standard windows key, a home key, and a call key. On the edge of the phone there was access to a volume rocker which was metal etched and on the bottom you had access to the 3.5 millimeter standard headphone jack along with a micro USB port, one of the first phones to use this now standard accessory port. There was also the microphone. And on the back there was access to a 5 megapixel autofocus enabled camera, the loudspeaker, and a dual LED flash. It actually took decent photos for the time and if we take a quick look at its uh, abilities in a moment you'll see that it's a decent shooter, um, especially for post some quick snaps onto social media. There was also a metal backplate that made the phone feel quite premium along with the soft touch rubber accents located on the sides. And the phone itself also had expandable storage by means of a micro SD card slot behind the back door. So if we take a closer look at how the phone runs here in 2017, we still have the original Windows Mobile 6.5 operating system. So this is a year before we saw the release of Windows Phone 7 and a more modern OS. And what HTC has done is they've created a skin on top of the operating system called HTC Sense, which is now, again, quite common in even their Android offerings. And it made the phone a lot more user-friendly, especially at a time where, H where Windows mobile phones were perceived to be only for business people and only for corporate users, just because the icons were very small, they weren't very intuitive to tap on with your fingers and they often required a resistive screen with a stylus. And this was, again, a first time that we saw such a large display and such an intuitive user menu system customized from the ground up. So taking a quick look at some of the pages here, we have access to a large, oversized, uh, almost a retro-style clock that HTC has designed. I can swipe down to have access to an array of commonly used applications. I can swipe to the sides to have access to my contacts, my messages, my emails, all my commonly downloaded apps and programs, and also specific shortcuts for things like TV shows, news, social media, internet searching, which launches the web browser that comes based on Internet Explorer, and there's also Opera Mini that came installed. In addition, there were photos and videos that give you kind of a widget view of all of your recently captured shots, and you can easily tap on them to take a closer view. And there was also access to your contacts again, so it cycles back and forth. So the thing is, it still remains a pretty snappy experience here in 2017. You'll see that there isn't that much lag, which is, again, quite impressive for a phone that was made in 2009. The display, which has a 800 by 480 resolution, it's not the sharpest, especially since we're spoiled by Quad HD and Ultra HD screens on modern phones. However, you can see that colors are still fairly well balanced, and for the most part, viewing back images, text, and videos still remains an enjoyable experience. 
The thing I also want to point out is for the time, you can see that there's a lot of uh, bloatware and applications both by HDC and by local carriers that they imported onto the HD2. And although we scorn a decision like this with modern Android smartphones, again, this was a necessary move back when Windows Mobile was around because there were very little kind of app store support. And again, the entire user interface just wasn't very optimized for touch and for the regular consumer. And so by making all of these widgets built in as well as a number of different apps built in right out of the box, people could simply pick it up and begin using it immediately, which was rare for a Windows mobile device. So taking a closer look at some of the programs on here, if we begin by checking out the camera, uh, there isn't a dedicated camera shutter key on this phone, like most Windows phone devices, since again, this is Windows Mobile, so there wasn't the requirement for a dedicated camera shutter key. But you can see here that HTC designed a fairly intuitive and modern user interface that gave you access to things like flash settings. You can also tap on the side here to change the photo resolution, a digital zoom, number of photos remaining with the default one gig of built-in storage, Again, that's expandable, and also some other auto correction and iOS I, ISO advanced settings. So it's actually pretty easy to use, and for the most part, again, colors are actually quite uh, saturated in addition to being realistic. So here's a few sample shots that I took outdoors. You can see that compared to modern day smartphones, it's definitely fuzzy. However, again, the colors themselves are realistic looking. Uh, some indoor shots as well under low light environments and of course some sample shots provided by HTC. So again, the display still remains a comfortable experience here in 2017 for viewing back your media, for browsing the web, and again, it does support pinch-to-zoom multi-touch, which was also uh, still a rare feature back in 2009. Next, let's take a closer look at the web browsing experience. The phone itself had access to both Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. And if you had all these features turned on, it would drain the power quite quickly, especially with only a 1,250 milliamp hour capacity battery in the back but at least that was user replaceable. And again, you have the option to toggle the settings on or off depending on when you used it. And for the most part, you can see that standby mode still works pretty well. This phone is a used model and I charge it up. Uh, I put it in standby mode with internet turned off and it lasted me about a week before I needed to recharge it again. So it still holds up as far as some very light usage here and there. So if we take a quick look at the web browsing experience, again, this phone uh, has Opera Mini set up as the default browser. So if I launch the browser in this uh, specific version, you can see that this is what, what comes up. And we can toggle back and forth between multiple pages and tabs. You can see that the browsing experience, it supports, again, pinch to zoom, and it automatically reflows the text to fit the size of the display just to make reading content a bit more comfortable. It does also feature an accelerometer, so you can tilt the display to have access to a more comfortable uh, experience in a horizontal view. Otherwise, Opera Mini also allows you to play back YouTube videos directly using the browser. So you can go to a, a mobile version of YouTube and watch back videos without any problems. Other more complex sites, such as the New York Times, will also load up, although it takes a little bit longer to completely render. With all these pros in mind, in 2017, the HD2 is showing its age with some of its apps and programs. For instance, if you use the native Internet Explorer app, if you want to use the native YouTube app, these actually no longer fully work. You can see that it uses this optimized interface, but it no longer fetches videos from YouTube servers. And instead, again, you have to use an Opera Mini to access it directly using that URL that you enter, or you have to uh, download a more modern program if you can find one available on the internet. So again, there are some areas, of course, as expected, that it no longer works right out of the box here in 2017 without requiring some tinkering and pulling around. Regardless, the phone has aged tremendously well, and surprisingly, for a phone that came out so many years ago, it still works without too many hassles. Um, some other things that we see on here, we can, of course, uh, now trace to the latest HTC devices. So some of their uh, programs they, they put in here at the time, such as Footprints, use the geotagging function to allow you to enter a memo whenever you take a photo. So it knows the location of uh, where you capture that image. You could put a rating. You could also put a description, a voice memo, and type out your notes so that when you get back home, you can look back at your photos, and uh, it almost creates an album and a story to go along with that, which was quite a unique feature. Of course, there were also consolidated services like calendars and smart, uh, 
smart weather applications that uh, we still see in today's modern HTC. For voice calls, the HTC HD2 still performs well, expectedly, and that's because the microphone is noise cancelling and reception is strong whether you use AT&T or T-Mobile's networks here in the States. Of course, the benefits of having a Windows mobile phone is if you really want to dig deep, you can still find its roots and use it almost like a pseudo laptop or a computer. So for instance, you have access to Office Mobile built on in, a benefit of having a Windows operating system. So there was Excel Mobile, OneNote Mobile, PowerPoint Mobile, and Word Mobile. And this allows you to both edit and create new Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents on the fly, uh, which was also quite nice because again, the HD2's large display meant that typing using a larger keyboard uh, really came in handy. If we take a quick look at some of those other built-in essential Windows mobile apps that we really haven't seen in almost a decade now, uh, if we look into things like games, we can see Bubble Breaker, Solitaire, which were both staples for the time. Again, this classic game that allows you to uh, align these bubbles that match the same color, break them down. It's actually pretty fun and responsive. So that's been a look back at the HTC HD2, an iconic Windows mobile smartphone and an iconic smartphone in general that brings back many memories not only for me but for many people uh, as they pick it up once more. And the incredible thing about this phone again is that it's still supported in many ways since the community of fans and active users still exist so we see the latest operating system still supported and running smoothly on a phone with almost decade old hardware which is getting increasingly difficult but nonetheless very, very impressive. So this is, again, a, almost a legend of a phone and back to the days where HTC kind of dominated in making smartphones, both with Windows as well as Android on the forefront. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been a look back review and kind of a throwback review of the HTC HD2 here in 2017.